There they go. They just started up. Well, I just arrived here to Spangler Road. Last time, I just drug my kayak into these weeds, but my goodness, that is about a seven foot tall mess. I don't know if I wanna walk in there. It is possible to drive right back where the takeout and put in is on the river. And if I can find a good spot to hide my kayak back there, that would be a heck of a lot easier to put in with all the gear I have than to make like three or four trips with all my gear and my kayak 100 yards down to the water. It sounds fairly quiet back here right now, so that's good. Looks like they did some work down here, clearing out log jams. Oh yeah, this is great. Last time I was here, there was 10 cars backed up in here, pop-up tents and families hanging out and everything. Oh yeah, I'm gonna bring my truck down here and I'll tuck my kayak in somewhere up in those weeds. You know, this is one of the trickier parts of solo kayak camping trips. You know, having to stage your vehicle at your ending location, which is what I always do. When I end my trip, I wanna be able to get out of the water and be at my truck and have it there waiting for me. So the hard part is right now, hide my kayak, deciding what gear I wanna leave in my kayak food, drinks, and all my other gear, and then driving down to the ending location and then waiting on an Uber. Sometimes it takes 10 minutes, sometimes it takes 25 or 30 minutes. So getting all that taken care of and then getting Uber back up here and then praying my kayak was not discovered, that all takes a lot of time and effort. But once I get on the water, it'll all be worth it. There it is. That's everything for a two-nighter. I'm putting it all in my kayak, but this. I wanna take this with me and bring it back with my Uber because it's got my drone in here. And obviously I'll be taking the camera with me that I'm filming with. But the rest of this, I'm gonna set in my kayak and drag off in the weeds. And it's wise to always triple check your vehicle to make sure you didn't leave anything behind because this is your one and only chance. I'm just going to kind of throw everything in here right now and resituate it when I get back because I want to get on the water. I brought me a fishing pole this time. I forgot to buy bait. It has some lures in it, but I uh, don't know how well that will work. I'll be going by a bait shop on the way down to Deeds Park. Maybe I can find something. I think I'm good to go. There's my truck down there. Fortunately, there wasn't people everywhere down here making this impossible. I'm here all alone except for one fisherman out in the water. So you saw me drag it up here over the little hill and down over the edge. Should be good. Let's go down over here below the hill where I'm parked to see if we can see it. Oh, not at all. It's right up over that hill, about 25 feet. All right, now that this order of business is taken care of, time to get back on the road to Deeds Point Metro Park. Actually, we're gonna be parking at Kettering Fields, which is upriver on the Great Miami River. Oh, maybe a quarter mile. So, huge safe parking area right there. That's where we're heading. Hopefully we can get an Uber. Just got dropped off by my Uber here at Spangler Road. This might've been the fastest Uber ride yet. 
He showed up, I kid you not, in less than four minutes after I ordered up my ride. So that didn't take long at all. Unfortunately, I forgot to film where I parked my truck over at Kettering Fields by Deans Point, right on the Great Miami River. It's 91 degrees, I'm ready to get on the water. Let's go. This is where we will be putting in the Mad River. I'm so excited to get back on the Mad River and finish up all 52 miles of this section paddle down to Deeds Park. I have no doubt that it's here because I was only gone for like 40 minutes. There she is. Just like that. We're one step closer to getting on the water. Bright Pat Air Force Base is like just a couple miles away. I don't have a problem dragging my kayak in soft dirt like this. There's no asphalt or concrete or gravel. It doesn't hurt it at all. under Spangler Road. All right, here we go. Officially back on the Mad River, leaving Spangler Road behind for my fourth installment, part four of my 2024 section paddle. Last year when I did this section, I just did it as an overnight. But I have two full nights out here this year. So I'm gonna take my time and thoroughly enjoy it. And one way that I was planning to enjoy it was to do a little fishing. I brought a fishing pole with me. I even stopped in Dayton at a bait shop and picked up a little container of wax worms. But we have a problem already. I forgot something again. I left the wax worms in the front seat of my truck. They're gonna be in there baking at probably over 100 degrees inside that vehicle for the next two days. Oh, and right there is the famous Spangler Road rope swing. Right up in that tree right there, there used to be a platform about 12 feet up. And it was the perfect place to jump from. Woo, it is a hot one out here today. It's very still and very humid, right around 90 degrees. Now when the sun goes behind the clouds, it definitely cools it down, it feels much more comfortable. So the plan tonight is to go about five miles away from Spangler, and there's a big sandbar on river right, just past the uh, little concrete road that you have to portage over that goes right down in the water and has a bunch of culverts going through it. Uh, the sandbar's about a quarter mile past that. You have to portage over this little concrete road. So it's the same place I camped at last year with one of my buddies and his kids and Lance, my buddy from Dayton. And it's where we cooked our Mexican street corn. So that was a great campsite. That's the one I'm shooting for tonight. some late summer vitamin D. Oh, this is so relaxing. It's awfully noisy up ahead. I can't tell what's going on. I don't know if that's just shallow water or what. Looks like we got a log right there on the left. Maybe, I don't know. Man, I'm telling you, I'm only one mile in and this is the third sketchy looking thing I've come upon. I almost spilled back there. I can't tell what this is. Is there a tree in the way or what? Uh, better play it safe and come over here to the side real quick. Uh, I think it's alright. Got a little branch right here I want to go over. Sucking me hard right into the bank. Man, it's crazy how fast that water sucked me towards the bank. You know, on it, pay attention. Almost had to paddle upstream to get around that. We are currently approaching I 70.
big bridge. Holy moly. currently 6.30 and I'm actively looking for a great campsite. I still have about 1.75 miles to the one I want to go to, but I'm willing to take something sooner if it comes up and I like it. Man, this is not bad right here. Easy access up into the woods for firewood. I might get out and check this one out. You know, it has been completely peaceful and quiet out here. I'm actually almost three-fourths of a mile away from I-70, but I can't get away from the noise of these military jets. C9s, C10s, whatever they're called. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. And it's like they're moving them from one place to another. My guess is they're coming from Charleston. When I was down in Charleston a couple years ago, I saw dozens and dozens of them lined up. So maybe they're leaving Charleston and coming to Wright Pat here in Dayton. I don't know. Woo! Man. That looks fun. Woohoo! Oh man! That was the most fun I've had in the last two hours. <laughs> Nothing sketchy. getting the strong smell of campfire smoke all of a sudden. I don't know where it's coming from. There's definitely someone camping up here. Ahead somewhere. Man, I can't see nothing. The sun is so bright. We are just coming up on four miles from Spangler, so just another mile. I'm hoping to make it to camp soon here. I'm ready to call today. It's a culvert graveyard. <laughs> I remember seeing this sign the last two times I came through, but I don't remember what it is. What does it say? Why is it there? Huh. Whatever it is, it's not legible today. Well, here is the uh, crazy concrete culvert road crossing the river that we have to portage over. All right, we gotta figure out where the best place to portage is. People always say river right. I don't remember. Even though I've done this three times, I still don't remember which side's the easiest. But this is a very sketchy spot and it's very hard to see. The sun is just like blaring in my eyes and I cannot see anything. All kinds of debris piled up against this little concrete road. Well, I definitely don't want to get sucked in on the left there. It looks like the water's getting sucked in pretty good on that concrete, so. Man, why? This is, this is a sketch. I mean, it's only a foot deep right here, so I can get out and stop and figure it out. Looks like we're going to be pulling out on the right. Yeah, I'm hitting already. Very shallow here. All right, I wanted to give you guys a good look at this. So there's some, there's some kind of debris right there. Oh, that's it looks like metal. And where that debris is over there, piled up against the concrete, there's usually open culverts there. I thought there was culverts right here. You just can't see them. I don't know if they're deeper under this concrete or what. At high water, you might be able to go right over it. I don't know. I'll probably take out right here. Looks like a lot of people are pulling up over the sand bank right there and then going over. All right, I want to give you a look at this from up above here. I remember last year we went down over there. Man, it looks deep right there. And you can see there's culverts. The water's boiling over. Now those culverts. That looks terrible over there. I think the water was a little higher last year. Because it wasn't that bad to pull our kayaks in, in a canoe down over there. But that looks really sketchy. I don't think I want to go that way. 
Jeez, this way doesn't look much better. Good grief. Yeah, we're gonna have to go this way. We'll go all the way around that tree, down to that little rock right there, and get in. It won't be that bad. And even though it's only like 15 inches deep right there. It's gonna be tough getting out. If the water was up two feet, man, this would be a very tough spot to get over. Man, what a pain. This is a tough portage. All right, I finally made it across here. Got all my gear back in. I'm trying to stay dry here. We go we made it oh what a pain in the butt check out these culverts they're all blocked up twelve culverts very strange bridge but they're all blocked up well now that I know that I'm only a quarter of a mile away from my campsite I'm not stressing out at all. Just gonna take it easy. But I'm kind of ticked off that I just ruined my brand new glasses. I just bought these today at Walmart and they fell off and got run over by the kayak when I was dragging it out. $14 glasses, I know they're El Cheapos. Day one, scuffed up and ruined. All right, I have arrived at the sandbar that I'm camping at tonight. It's a long one. Just gotta decide where to stop along here. Looks like a lot of big stones. That's the sandbar I'm camping on tonight. The same one we camped on last year. Man, not quite as nice as I remember. We're gonna stop and give it a look. This is home tonight. Look at all this driftwood. I mean, the river was up to here at one time. You see this line of driftwood right here? That is four feet higher than it is right now, at least. And it's somewhere between three and four feet. But that that is all perfect wood for a fire tonight, all the way down, all over. Oh, you can see that the water is all the way up to here at one time. Another drift line. That's probably five feet higher than it is now. Wow, that is incredible. The Mad River gets so high so many times throughout the year. I wouldn't want to be on it when, down in this section when it's that high, that's for sure. This is almost exactly where I camped last year. Right here where uh, there's not a lot of big stones. This is home tonight. driftwood everywhere. This is about the easiest firewood collecting I've ever done. I mean, it's just handfuls everywhere. All up and down this little rocky beach. I am starving. Cooking up some sweet corn and T-bone steak. I was hoping to do all this in the daylight. But since I went live on YouTube, I'm kind of behind. Looks like the corn's done, and the steak is just about there. Mmm. Man, it hits the spot. It's been a while since I've had a T-bone steak. But man, that little section right there was so good. If I could get it. 
Mm. Not bad for a Walmart reject steak. It was marked down to 11.59 or something like that. I wanted a ribeye, but they were all in packs of two. And I just happened to be at Walmart, so I was looking through the T-bones and found this discounted T-bone. It's pretty good. It was a long day on the farm. Glad to be laying horizontal. I'll see you in the morning. Mmm. Boy, it is shaping up to be a beautiful day and a warm one. Let's take a little walk to the other end of this gravel bar. So I just found this brick and this nice rock that's about the same size as the brick. I'm gonna put that right in my fire, have the coals right here for cooking my breakfast. I can set my pan right on top of that. Wow, look at that sunshine. It feels like it's mid 70s already. It's gonna be a hot one. Perfect day to be on the river. It's about 8.45 and I gotta tell you, it's been really nice just loafing around camp, taking my time, enjoying coffee, enjoying a cantaloupe. Probably better gather up a little bit more firewood so I can have some nice coals for cooking. At about 10 o'clock, I'm guessing, there's another group of five coming down the river. They camped out just before Spangler Road last night. We were supposed to meet up last night here at this gravel bar. They were worn out from probably a close to a 20 mile day, I don't know. But I did, they didn't quite make it to Spangler, so I was about probably six miles ahead of them because I'm about five miles in right here from where I started. They got on the water at eight o'clock, so I'm thinking around 10, they should be real close to being here. I'm gonna float with them for a while, um, get them on video. They are from my area, my hometown of Bell Fountain. And then I'm gonna stop and do some fishing along the way and cooking some lunch, flying the drone. I'm just gonna relax and chill because I only got like 13 miles to the end. These guys are gonna have a big day. They're finishing today. And there's a slight chance that I will too, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna stop and camp again somewhere along the way. If, it, if I can find a quiet place, it is gonna keep getting noisier and noisier as I get closer to Dayton. Here's what's on the menu for breakfast. A fresh candy onion and red bell pepper from my farm and a jalapeno. Three farm fresh eggs from one of my uh, past employees that came and dropped them off for me. And a couple little baby red potatoes from Texas. I don't grow red potatoes. As soon as I finish my amazing sweet cantaloupe, I'm gonna get all that chopped up and get it in the frying pan and get it cooking because I'm getting hungry and it's getting hot. I'm ready to get back on the water. All right, there it is, all ready to go into the frying pan candy onion, red bell pepper, baby red potatoes, and a jalapeno. Just about finished up here. Everything turned out fantastic. Delicious.
And I'm officially off on day two for the final 13 miles down to the Great Miami River at Deeds Point Metro Park. So right before I left camp, I decided to fly the drone. And I forgot Wright Patterson Air Force Base is right beside me. So an authorization zone uh, warning came up on the screen. And you know it says you can bypass it if you put your phone number in there and agree. Check a little box to agree to something. And I was like, eh, let's just save the battery and wait till we get to Deeds Point Metro Park. Because I want to have some battery left in my drone to film the uh, fountains. They have fountains that go off at the top of every hour, I believe. Big water guns that shoot up in the sky like 100 feet or something. So hopefully that is not in the authorization zone. It could be, being almost downtown Dayton. So we'll see. We'll give it a shot. I mean, I see a lot of fish swimming around right in here. So I saved a little bit of my breakfast. Leftovers for my breakfast. Some potatoes, peppers, and some eggs. Just a little handful. And I'm going to use that as bait to see if I can catch something. Here it is, my little backpacking fishing pole. Here's the little container of lures, hooks, and sinkers. I don't know if it came with this or if I put it together. I probably put it together just an assortment out of my tackle box or some of my son's stuff. I think I'm going to put a little bobber on here. And maybe I'll try one of these little worms first. I got some like little fake wax worms and grubs and stuff. Spoons. Ooh, a little frog. All kinds of goodies. All right, I'm ready to give her a shot. There's my little bobber, a little sinker, and a little rubber wax worm, or whatever that is. My reel sticks a little bit on every revolution. Cheap piece of junk. I think I'm going to try some of my leftover breakfast. Since I'm fishing with a bobber, I can just throw it out there and let it set for a little bit. I decided to try a red pepper. You're not going to believe this. I think I had something. Something bit on that. Pulled my... Um, bob her way down. All right, we're going to keep trying. Well, I got hung up on a log and came out here to try to hook it and it was just out of my reach underwater. I broke off the hook and swivel. I don't have the patience for this. I'd rather do other things on the river. So I'm going to put this contraption away and start drifting around and maybe just exploring the banks a little bit. Let's go up in this little creek and investigate. I'm sure I won't get very far, but it's something fun to do. I hear rushing water up ahead. So right up ahead there, there's water spilling out of something. I don't know what it is. Well, whatever it is, I don't have time to investigate it now because the group that I've been waiting on is coming around the turn. I can hear them. Uh, let's see if I can turn around and get out of here. Okay. How'd you like that concrete barrier? Sucked. Yeah, that was a pain in the butt. Fun little section here. It is getting warm. You know, in the upper reaches of the Mad River, in the very beginning, you know, the trees hang over in the river and the river's where really narrow so you're in the shade most of the time but out here down in Springfield Dayton area the river's a lot wider so you're fully exposed to the sun the majority of the time it's a lot of down logs right there oh, I made it through no problem it's a little tricky to find the right line through there I'm glad you went first. <laughs> Typically, I have to go first. <laughs> you 
No problem. <laughs> so, uh, Mike behind me, I'll introduce all these guys to you here in a second, but uh, Mike's the one that knows me. I don't know his four buddies, except from just meeting him right now. Um, he said there's like less than 10 miles to go. I mean, I'm probably just gonna finish the thing up today. Mainly because I know the camping is gonna be very noisy along I-4 or State Route 4, whatever it is. I'm gonna be following this state route all the way to Dayton. And I remember it being noisy. I don't know what I was thinking about camping a second night out here. We'll see. So many little places where you gotta be careful or you're gonna get sucked right into the trees. You can see how low the water is. That sandbar was probably underwater last week. At least part of it. Some nice properties right on the banks of the Mad River. I always say I'd love to own a piece of property on the river. I don't think I would want to down here though. Maybe in Michigan, along the Little Manistee. I don't know how well the camera is picking this up, but I can really hear the car traffic. It sounds like it's like a quarter mile to my right. Yeah, pretty noisy. This would not be a good area to camp in. Everybody decided to pull out and grab a lunch, take a little break. I was going to introduce you to everybody here. This is Justin in his no name kayak. We think it's a pelican. Pelican Explorer. Pelican Explorer. Alright. This is Mike and his perception. Escador. Escador. You really like that kayak? Oh, I love it. Very stable. Yeah. Very stable on the water. Nice sit on top. Yeah. I like the cargo space. Next we have John. John. John with the Pelican. What version of Pelican is this? Coach. Okay. Everybody's got sit on tops. And your name? Jake. Jake. And you got the lifetime with the removable seat. I like that. Lots of cargo space in this kayak. And you said it was like an 11 foot six or something. He's cooking up something good there. And Dave, right? And what are you riding? Oh, it's also a Pelican, I see. Yep. Rated right. for uh, back. Yeah, <laughs> you've, you've had a couple spills, I've heard. Oh, yeah. I like these little outriggers. Never seen that before. So these guys have been through paddling all 52 miles, give or take, of the Mad River. They started three days ago, so they've been on the river for two nights, and they are wrapping up their through paddle here today. I think we have eight miles left, I'm guessing. But we were looking for a shady spot on the gravel to take a little break and cook some lunch. I might be going all the way to the end with them. I haven't decided yet. Like I said earlier, I just don't know if I want to camp along this noisy road. And it's going to continue to get worse as we get closer and closer to downtown Dayton. But we will see. I think I'm going to have a little watermelon right now. Hope I picked out a good one. So far, it looks good. Sounds good. You got your melon from the farm? Yep. Yeah. I tried to bring one of the smallest ones I could find. That's a lot of weight. Even that little thing probably weighs like uh, five or six pounds. Mm. I hit your spot on a hot summer day. And we're back on the water. Nine miles to go. And I was just chatting with my wife about how I don't think I can make this a two day trip. I mean, here we are at noon. And I only got nine miles to go. I'm going to be done with this river by 3 or 4 p.m. And at that area where I would like to camp, because of the, you know, the length of time or the time of the day it's going to be, I'm going to be in the middle of town with wide open um, tra walking trails and businesses and highways all around me. So I just don't know how I want to make a second night happen out here unless I stop here in the next couple of miles. Maybe near the Huffman Dam or the Huffman Park, I'll stop and take a look at it. But, uh, you know, there's no public camping there, I'm sure, and it's still right next to this busy highway. So what I might do is go ahead and finish up the river today and maybe camp somewhere 
along the river on the way home as my second night. I don't know. We'll see. It's kind of fun having this problem to figure out. how shallow it is up ahead. I'm gonna get stuck. Maybe. Maybe it's deeper than I thought. Can't believe it. Alright, we are here at the Huffman Dam. There's the uh, danger sign straight ahead. And the water is very shallow right here. Looks like we can get through though. That is a beast of a dam to portage over. I'm hoping we can go right through. So if you're gonna portage this, you get out right there at the beginning of the concrete wall and you can see at the very top, there's a uh, stair steps. Yeah, that would not be a fun portage. You'd have to unload all your gear and make two trips actually. So, and my previous two attempts through here um, I went through the center and went left of the concrete barrier on the other side. This looks pretty simple and straightforward today. Very shallow right here. It's only about a foot deep. Oh yeah, this is easy today. No scary currents. It's still only about two foot deep right here. I bet you the depth will really change on the other side. Smooth sailing, by far the easiest of my three times coming through here. I don't see any weird currents. Usually this concrete barrier right in front of you creates a weird current right here. I see it in the water swirling a little bit. If you're not careful, it can spin you sideways. But it looks like it's really, really deep right here. All right, I'm gonna turn around and film the guys coming through. I know a lot of them were really uh, worried about it, but yeah, that was a no-brainer to go through there today. But you can see right in front of me is those weird currents I was talking about. It's kind of a swirl, but yeah, it's not bad today. Piece of cake. Easy day. Oh, it's running the wall. Yeah, the current's a little strange right here. All right, three of the five guys are through. The last two making their way into the tunnel right now. Pretty smooth sailing. Now here's those weird currents right here that sometimes swirl you around. All right, everybody made it. Onward. After three days on the Mad River, do you guys feel like the end is finally in sight? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> so close, but so far. Two major portages yet. John, if you go over that, I can't fix you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're here at the dam, or whatever you want to call this. This is not a low head dam. I mean, it's not like you're gonna drop straight down. It's like a stair steps. But yeah, you don't want to try to go over that. Maybe during high water, you could do it in a whitewater kayak. Oh, here's another look at it. Over here, you can see what it looks like. Usually that is all full of water. So that shows you how low the water is. Way down. Just high enough to do a through paddle, but barely. Now, on my 2018 through paddle, I went straight. Me and the Colonel went straight. But there is a very difficult place to pull out to get around and it's not recommended to go that way. It's like 1.30 and I'm starving for lunch. So I'm hoping that I can camp somewhere around here. Um, I need a place to set up camp and cook and having that noise will drown out the road traffic that's around me. That's my hope. This is my last shot. If I go beyond this, I'm gonna get the Eastwood Lake and the Eastwood 
park and the Eastwood, you know, the, the chutes, like the rapids. And there's gonna be people everywhere and highways everywhere. That wouldn't be good. I would just have to go fish. All right, everybody's pulling out here. All the guys made it through the portage, getting back on the water. But I believe this is where we're gonna be parting ways because I'm hungry and I need to find a place to camp. This would be the perfect place. There's grass and trees. It says no trespassing now. I wish I knew who owns this property. I don't know if this is city property or if it's private property. You know, is it tres no trespassing just beyond that sign? Or is all of this no trespassing? Because you know, I can set my tent up right here on the edge of the grass on, the, on this side of the no trespassing sign. I don't know. But since there's a road here that's obviously well used and well traveled, there's a good chance that uh, somebody would drive around here and see me camping. So I'm not sure what to do. But I'm starting to run out of options of where I can camp tonight. But I'm pretty sure I'm not going to continue on right now because I need, I need to at least eat. And I'll look at Google Maps real close and we'll figure something out. I must admit, this section looks kind of fun. And I know it's doable because I did it in 2018. I might go that way. But first, I'm going to cook some lunch. I'm starving. Oh, feels good to take a load off in the shade. Not that I was working hard anyway. But I do feel a little tired. Probably because I'm so hungry. I haven't eaten since 9.30 this morning. And it's about 1.30. Oh shoot, it's 2 o'clock. No wonder I'm hungry. So I'm definitely going to cook my lunch right here. I'm going to start a little fire, make some lunch. I'm not going to go beyond the no trespassing sign. Unless I can uh, find out who owns this property. I don't know what to do here yet. I might go on down river a little bit. I'm not sure yet. But let's get my belly full and then we'll figure it out. Starting off with a little white miso soup as the appetizer today. It's already boiling, but we'll bring it to a boil again, just to make sure that it's all uh, rehydrated well. Next on the list, fried green tomatoes. I'm gonna enjoy a second appetizer before moving on to the main course. Sounds like coyotes howling over there across the river. I've never heard a pack of coyotes howling in the middle of the day like this. That's crazy. All right, I'm gonna to try to cut about four or five slices of green tomato with this crappy knife. I need a new knife. Tell me what knife I should get in the comments. This is like a $3 Walmart knife. All right, here's my uh, flour and cornmeal mix. Butter, tomatoes, frying pan. I also have brown sugar and horseradish sauce to put on top of the fried green tomatoes when they're finished. Just gonna throw them in here. Get them coated well, get them fried up. All right, batch one is done. We'll get these next two on here. A little bit of brown sugar. I didn't put any salt and pepper on because I'm getting low. I want to save it for tonight in case I make sweet corn again. And the secret sauce. Some horseradish.
All right, here it goes. My first bite of fried green tomatoes over the fire. Oh man, mm. outstanding. That was so worth the effort. Man, I wish I could camp here. I was planning on it, but I forgot to tell you, a security truck just drove by about 20 minutes ago, and it was uh, about a 20-year-old kid that got out, and he said, I was fine to be hanging out here, taking a break, cooking some lunch, but that I need to move along because there's gonna be other security trucks driving around all day today, and that uh, this is private property. But I looked it up, and this just looks like city of Dayton property. In my mind, I should be allowed to camp on the outskirts of city of Dayton property. This is not private ownership property. I could be wrong. Maybe the Dayton water fields are owned by a private organization, but I'm pretty sure from what I found online is the city of Dayton property. And to me, that's not trespassing. And now time for the main event, Costco pierogies with sour cream and balsamic glaze. Oh yeah. The good thing about pierogies is that they're basically already cooked. You just gotta reheat them. Let's just try not to burn them. I'm really low on, I'm actually out of butter. I had just enough to cook the pan and it's already dry. That's all right, it won't take these things long to cook. Finishing up my last bite of fried green tomato. It was absolutely amazing. Some of the best fried green tomatoes I've ever had cooked over this little fire along the Mad River. Mm. There's just something about cooking over a campfire. Adds that little something extra. All right, pierogies are done. On to the frisbee plate. Now for the sour cream. I'm just gonna make a big pile of it here. I just kind of dip it in the sour cream as I eat them. And for some balsamic glaze. All right, let's give this a shot. It's kind of hard to eat with this little, what is this, the Sea to Summit spoon? I should have brought a regular fork. Perfectly cooked and delicious. So inside these Costco pierogies, it's like a cheesy potato onion flavor. If you didn't know what pierogies were. Perfect way to eat lunch on the Mad River. A little extra work of stuff to prepare, carry, and cook, and clean. But I'm telling you, it's so worth it. If you're, if you're not in a rush, I'm definitely not in a rush today. I wonder what time it is. It's probably like four o'clock. This ended up almost being like an early dinner. Late lunch. And about a mile or two, right before Eastwood Park, it might be Eastwood Park property, there's an island, like an oxbow. The river goes around both sides. I don't know if it's campable or not. And it looks like it's a little bit of distance from the roads. So maybe the traffic noise wouldn't be so bad there. Just look at this. How can you eat much better than this on the river? I mean, the only thing that I can think of that even comes close to this is what I made on my last trip and what I made last year, chopping up all my farm fresh vegetables and making vegetable fajitas with mustard and brown sugar sauce. You know, that was all from scratch. Yes, the pierogies were already made, kind of pre-made, pre-cooked type thing. Still a lot of work that goes into cooking all this and preparing everything and remembering and putting on the sour cream and the balsamic glaze, which is, is killer. Let's see if I can fit a whole one in my mouth in one bite. All right, ready to move on down river. One final look at the 
little uh, dam area. Very, very low water. Never seen it that low. All right, I think I see an island on Google Maps one or two miles down river. Let's go check it out. Right before Eastwood Lake Park. Pretty quiet out here. If I could find a suitable spot to camp close by, I would take it. I can't really hear too much road traffic. I can still hear the waterfall or the dam area behind me, just barely. Coming up on a massive rock garden that is gonna have to be portaged around. We'll get as close as we can so you can get a good look at it. Last time the water was flowing over these rocks. And during high water, I'm pretty sure you'd be able to kayak over it, but it would definitely be sketchy. Last year when I was here, there was no way you could kayak up to these rocks. It would have sucked you in and took you over. But it doesn't look like you could even get over if you tried this year, because the water's so low. We're gonna go all the way up to it and bump the rocks, and I'll show you what it looks like over the edge. It's a pretty good drop. Good eight feet, looks like. Wow. Yeah, last year the water was raging through here. If I'm able to, I'll throw some footage up from it last year. But uh, my buddy David, he pulled his, uh, him and his two boys, pulled the canoe down through the water right here. Incredible how low it is. Man, it almost looks like I can pull my kayak right on through the water there. Otherwise, you gotta go up right here, up and around, and come back down over there. Well, I just got around that. I was gonna pull it down through there. I found a nice line that I think would have worked, but it'd been a lot of scraping and bumping along the way with all those boulders. So I ended up going up and around, came down right there. Probably wasn't much better on my kayak. But it's done now, onward to this island up here at about a half mile. Just walking along, too shallow to yak in. Looks like I got a couple hundred yards of this, possibly. Man, I've been hitting a ton of rocks. This has not been fun, but it's definitely better now. And I believe our island is straight ahead, about two or three hundred yards there. I don't know if it's going to be any good. Looks like a bunch of saplings and just thick, impenetrable mess. Well, here's the island. Doesn't look like I can get through going left because it's so shallow. So we're going to follow the bigger body of water to the right. I mean, it looks like I could possibly camp right there on the tip. A lot of big rocks. Let's go on around it and see what it looks like on the other side. Now, this area looks more promising. I wish there was some shade. I might have to get off here and investigate a little bit before moving on. Well, the place I pulled off is definitely a popular place because there are six fire pits here, or old fires, all over the place. If I go any further, I'm gonna come into the open area of the Eastwood Metro Park. Ooh. Look at this nice soft gravel. You know, more sandy, small pebbles. Another fire. This is a good view too. You can see the other side where it joins back into the main side. This might be home tonight. I'm just really exposed. Anybody that's walking in these walking trails over here would be able to see me. But I'm not too worried about that. Yeah, I'm gonna investigate a little bit more, but I have a feeling I might be staying right there tonight. Right up. There's that spot I was thinking about camping. But I'm gonna go to the other side right here where it's shaded to kind of hang out and look at Google Maps a little bit more. Whee! Like a little roller coaster. I'm gonna sit right here in my Helinox chair and relax a little bit. This heat's taking it out of me. It's a nice shaded spot right here. And if I decide to stay here, 
I'll go set my tent up over there where I was showing you a little bit ago. Once the sun gets a little lower in the sky and there's some shade hitting that spot. I got my camera put away in the dry bag back there where the Eastwood Park water shoots are or whatever they're called in that low head dam. Didn't want to risk it, but we should be good now. Just another mile or two to the end. Well, we're on our final mile of the Mad River. We'll be coming out to the Great Miami River, just up ahead here at Deeds Point Metro Park. And I failed to mention, uh, when I was back there cooking my lunch, um, that I had some dessert to cook. I brought local peaches with me, and it's the final week of Ohio peaches. They're done, and I was gonna make a peach dessert. I was gonna chop them up and mix them up in my cook pot with some water and sugar, bring it to a boil and add some cornstarch, and make like a pie filling. And I brought some crescent roll, like pastry, and I was gonna stretch it out and fry it in my pan, and then add the peach filling to make like a, a peach hot pocket, just like I did in my last video with the raspberries. Unfortunately, I ran out of butter cooking my pierogies. I didn't bring enough butter and I had no oil, so I had no way to cook my dough. So unfortunately, no peach hot pocket on the Mad River trip. I was really looking forward to it. Doggone it. Oh well, it is what it is. I believe this is our final bridge we're going under before entering the Great Miami River. We're going beside Deeds Point Metro Park right now. All right, here it is, folks. I am exiting the Mad River into the Great Miami River. Now I gotta go upriver uh, just beyond that overpass, Kettering Fields. Give you a little look here on the other side. There's the very end of the Mad River right there under that footbridge. All right, let's get paddling up the Great Miami River and find us a good spot to take the drone off so we can uh, get an overhead view of these fountains that are getting ready to go off in 15 minutes. Alrighty, folks, that's a wrap on my 2024 section paddle of the Mad River from Lions Club Ballpark in West Liberty down here to Deeds Point Metro Park in Dayton. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And I hope to see you all again real soon on another outdoor adventure. There they go. They just started up. Let's go see if I can get the drone going.